Welcome back to 20 Minutes or Less. I'm Joe Beretta. I'm Elliot Morgan. Here we go. Daniel Chong is going to be a millionaire. Congratulations, Daniel Chong. He's gonna go from everyday UC San Diego college student to millionaire, almost overnight. And by almost overnight, I mean the DEA put him in a holding cell, forgot about him for four days, and he had to drink his own urine to survive. Sorry about that, Daniel Chong. Now he's out, and he's suing the DEA to the tune of $20 million. Chong was just celebrating April 20th like so many other college students celebrate April 20th, and he did so by going to his friend's house to smoke the marijuana. But as it turns out, this house happened to also be harboring 18,000 ecstasy pills, some guns, and some ammunition which is what you put in guns before you fire them. Chong had no idea about any of this, but he found out very quickly when the DEA raided the house that he was just chilling in and arrested him and his eight friends. You guys are city officials. You shouldn't be working on a holiday. What? Ecstasy? No, I don't have 18,000 pills. They did the usual song and dance at the DEA headquarters with the fingerprinting and the photographs and the interviews, but when the other hooligans were escorted to a detention facility, Chong was, quote, no really, this is a quote, a real quote from the DEA headquarters. Bring up the quote screen. Accidentally left in one of the cells. P.S. The holding cell had no windows, no toilet, and no sink. Just a bunch of walls. During his four-day ordeal, he experienced what we hear at SourceFed Lights call the, the seven, seven steps, steps of being accidentally, accidentally left, left in a cell, cell for four, four days. days. Step one, boredom. The dude was in the cell by himself. The dude probably got bored. Step two, hunger. He was probably suffering from a dangerous case of being high and having the munchies. Those symptoms were probably amplified by not having access to food. Step three, Three, he contracted a bad case of what the fricks. These occur after extended periods without human interaction and you go, what the frick is going on? At this point, Chong screamed out numerous times for help and started kicking the cell door in an attempt to get some attention. Step four, survivor man. Chong went from, hey, somebody help me, to, oh my God, I gotta help myself because I'm dying from dehydration. He attempted to trigger an overhead fire sprinkler, but that's kind of difficult when you don't have fire and your hands are cuffed together. Oh, did I forget to mention, his hands were cuffed together the whole time. So finally, in a move that ended up saving his life, Chong was forced to rely on drinking his own urine to survive. Step five, tripping balls. These were most likely brought on by the fact that he was, you know, tripping balls. He was handcuffed for four days alone without water or food and was drinking his own urine. Plus, and this is the best part, he found a white powder in his cell and he decided to eat it because he needed some sort of sustenance. And that white powder turned out to be methamphetamine. He breaking batted himself. He explained that he experienced visions of Japanese anime cartoons telling him he needed to Andy Dufresne it and basically dig a hole out of his cell. And don't forget, he was handcuffed. Tripping balls. Step six, F this noise. After four days of isolation, Chong stated that he felt he was going to die, and if he wanted to keep his dignity, he'd have to do it himself. At this point, he broke his glasses and attempted to slit his wrist. He said, quote, I didn't care if I died. I was completely insane. Thankfully, this step wasn't carried out to the end because they finally discovered Chong, who was at this point 15 pounds lighter and close to kidney failure. And the last and final step is step seven. Sue the crap out of the DEA. Chong, who is still recovering and breaks down whenever he recalls the incident, has filed a $20 million claim stating that his treatment constitutes torture under both U.S. and international law. And I don't know if I can really disagree with this statement. No, just give them the money. I don't, yeah. don't think they even need to go to trial, really. No, I think $20 million is a perfectly fair price. The DEA has since issued an apology and is ordering an extensive review of both policy and procedure. And if there's one thing that I think everybody should take from this story, it is this moral. Don't, don't do, do pot. pot. So what do you guys think? Is $20 million enough to compensate for what this guy went through? Let us know in the comments down below. And click the like button, subscribe if you have and you can always feel free to click this annotation bar because it's here for you or go to sourcefed.com to see our five daily stories or anything else we have ever done. My name is Elliot Morgan. And I'm Joe Beretta. Don't, Don't do pot? pot?